Okay, I'm going to go through putting this light together. The key to getting the LED and the heat sink into the body is to is to fold the LED down like this so that it's pointing straight down. There's only only one way it'll go through the opening. You put this um, with the two um, thinner edges here straight in the back of the of the body, and you push this in until it goes down in. And then you reach in this end with a pair of long nose pliers, and you grab that heat sink. But it, again, it can only come through with the LED pointing straight at the knob. If you use any force whatsoever, you're, you're not going to get there. You, you have to be very, very gentle and wiggle it until it just falls through. Now, once it's through like this, you've got to get the switch to fall down in the switch cavity. And sometimes it takes a minute to get it to do that. There it goes. You take a battery and you put it in the knob side, hold it with your finger, and see if the switch is engaged properly. Okay, no problem there. Feels good. Now, without turning it upside down and letting the, the board fall away from the switch again, you take the battery out, you reach in with the long nose pliers, and you grab and twist clockwise and pull towards yourself in this case. And that makes the um, little wire that I have soldered on the PCB board go into the groove that's cut down in there. Let's see if a little extra light will help. <coughs> Just happen to have a few of these spies laying around here. Uh, so maybe you can see down in there, there is that uh, little groove. Um, but you can kind of see that the copper uh, wire has been now pushed into that groove. And what that does is that holds the prismatic board in place so it can no longer fall out. And it um, it is supposed to enable this um, for you to be able to turn the knob while there's no batteries in here. And some of them didn't quite work. Um, so we're ready now to go ahead and put batteries in. So we put in two brand new batteries. And the battery cap um, always needs a little bit of, of lubrication on the O-ring. So I'll put a little bit on here. Come around here. This is the lubrication concoction that uh, Wayne and Don came up with. Um, and it is slippery stuff. It works really good. Now you put the battery cap on. Make sure it's seated pretty well. These buttons don't come all the way out like I originally said. Some of them are a little shy of that. I adjusted the parameters in the machining. And there were, of course, um, anodizing and things like that. The knob does not have to come, the button doesn't have to come all the way out. It just needs to come, uh, you need to visually check where it comes to so that you can always make sure that the battery cap is on. Then, um, what I do next is while the, um, while the LED is hanging out the front, I run it through its paces to see if it's going to work okay. It's okay to me. Next, I take an X-Acto knife and I push into the edge between the print circuit board and the body so that I make sure that the print circuit board is pushed up against this side of the body. This little piece right here is the heat sink and I'm going to bend it into the body just as soon as I take a little bit of thermal grease 
and put in here. Okay, that's kind of hard for you to see. There we go. Put the thermal grease right in there between the body. And the heat sink. There we go. I got a little in there. Looks good. No, it's hard for you to see. But you get the idea. I put the X-Acto blade back in. And I use a pointy thing to push on the top of that heat sink and bend it over until it touches the side of the body. That kind of captures this end of the printed circuit board from being able to walk back and forth. It's pushed up against this side of the body, and the heat sink is pushed up against this side. That um, thermal paste is nicely um, in there. You can kind of see it there. Thermal paste is, is uh, between that little heat sink, which is now bent up against the side of the body. Next, we pre-bend the wires coming out the back of the heat sink, so they're like this. And we get the head ready to go on. It already has the heat sink on it. I take more thermal grease with a little X-Acto knife, and I put thermal grease around the inside edge of the head. Okay, so I have it ready. I have my little stick ready that I don't know maybe I told you about. It's a little stick with a concave cut in the end. You take this and you twist. You want to get that to look like a helix and you want to twist it around and get it to go right in. I've been doing this for a long time. I'm kind of gotten an expert at it. You hold it down with the edge of your finger. You put the stick on top of it. You hold this in place. You take this without getting the thermal grease on the stick. You let this come down. And then while still holding pressure on the stick, you turn the head until it's all the way down. And that's it. We're almost done. Um, then we put in the O-ring, and I take the um, uh, reflector, and I blow it out, make sure that there is no dust in it. Okay, the O-ring goes right in the head. And it lays around in that groove right there. The reflector goes in. Then I take the um, lens. I put the lens in my shirt. And I clean it. They were already clean, although I noticed some fingerprints on them. Then I hold the lens. After I've cleaned it off, I blow it off with air, and I set it in the front of the light. Turn the light on so that I can see if there's any dust in there. No dust. Take the ring, screw it on. I use a piece of, of nice tacky rubber, and I take the light, and I use that with a lot of force get that ring tight on there. And there we have it. That's what it takes to put one of the lights together.